Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A Michigan State University hockey player is speaking out about a racist incident on the ice and why he's not satisfied with how it's been handled. Dearborn native Jagger Joshua says an Ohio State player used a racial slur multiple times against him, and that player was thrown out of the game for it. Well, Joshua thought that would be the start of the dis disciplinary measures. The Big Ten looked into it, but in the 11 days since has not taken further action. But within the past hour, Jagger Joshua uh, stepped forward to talk about it. Victor Williams live with what he had to say. Victor. Yes, Devin and Kimberly, you know, in a white male dominated sport, this player in a way just wants to change the culture of how this game is played. I can't really tell you what uh, he was thinking nor his objective from uh, using those the slur. MSU hockey player Jagger Joshua going on record about racism he said occurred during a game against Ohio State. I just hope that one day hockey is uh accepting enough for kids like me to grow up and they don't have to go through the same struggles that I went through and they don't have to deal with the same uh, negativity that defers a lot of young African Americans and minorities from playing hockey. Joshua says one Buckeye player continuously used racial slurs targeting him during a home game at MSU back on November the 11th. Over the years I, I've obviously been the, I've been the lone uh, African American in a lot of locker rooms. I've heard all types of language that discourages other kids like myself from playing. In this instance, it looks like a player was only given a penalty when one of the refs heard what he was saying. According to Joshua, there was an investigation by the Big Ten, but to his knowledge, no other action has been taken by the conference or Ohio State. The referee heard himself, so I don't, I don't know if they necessarily don't believe me, but... Their decision was there wasn't enough evidence to go further. Joshua took his frustrations to Twitter, writing the following, which in part reads, quote, acts of racism do not belong in hockey as they can discourage African Americans and any minorities like myself from playing and enjoying the game. An action in the face of racist comments and actions allow these behaviors to continue. I went through a range of emotions from hopeful to optimistic and now pessimistic. Ohio State did not get back in contact with us for comment on this matter. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor. An unusual fire in Ann Arbor overnight has left two seniors hospitalized. It happened at University Living on South Main Street, not far from U of M's campus. Jason Colthorpe spoke to the fire chief there, who has a warning for everyone. Very, very lucky. This easily could have been a double fatal fire because they were both very, very close to where this was at. That is what's left of an electric wheelchair. It caught fire inside an apartment at University Living just after midnight. Firefighters rescued the two seniors from that apartment. The real concern, though, for Fire Chief Mike Kennedy is that the fire started in a charging lithium-ion battery in the chair. This is the battery cell that has these batteries in it, so basically all lithium-ion batteries it's these individual cells and this had what's called the thermal runaway and when these take off it has explosive gas and you can see what it did to the metal and basically this created a jet of flame that set the chair on fire and also set the apartment on fire. Even after the fire, the department has to store those batteries carefully in protective polymer and inside a $300 bucket. The issue with these batteries, they can continue to heat up and uh, run away up to several days later. So it could still... Yeah, tomorrow it could go off again. They're finding that 48 hours later, these things can still light off again. The lithium-ion battery issue is not new and it's not going away. It's huge. It's, it's, it's all across the country. Um, new York has had several fatal fires because of it, uh, but a lot for them has been like e-scooters and e-bikes. This is one of the first ones I've heard of an uh, electronic wheelchair. And that's why Kennedy is concerned, especially for college students when it comes to those scooters. We're really just trying to warn people that just if you're charging it, make sure someone's there and awake and, and obviously try not to put it in an exit path in case something takes off. The fire chief says there's about $200,000 in damage that was done to the facility here. And several other people were also displaced because of the water damage done here. In Ann Arbor, Jason Colthorpe. Local 4. And thank you. And the two seniors taken to the hospital were suffering from smoke inhalation. There's no word yet on their condition.
We are also waiting to get more information on a fire that tore through an apartment complex in Genesee County. Sky 4 was there over the fairways at Woodfield apartment complex. That's near I-75 and Saginaw Road in Grand Blanc Township. You can see fully engaged at the time uh, as they work to figure out what started the fire. We will keep you posted. A long legal battle over a mosque in Troy has finally come to an end. A zoning dispute has hung like a cloud for several years over the Adam Community Center. Place of worship is located on Rochester Road south of Waddles. That's where we find Jacqueline Francis live with what we know about the agreement that was reached. Jacqueline. Kimberly, after years of litigation, the first mosque in the city of Troy was able to open in September. And now that there's finally a settlement reached, they're hoping to put this legal battle behind them. The Muslim community in Troy has waited a long time for a place of their own. The legal fight started in 2018 when the leaders of the community center and mosque bought the building. It took a long time because there was no good space in Troy and because the city of Troy was unwilling to relax any of the zoning requirements to allow them to, to have a place of worship. In March, a federal judge ordered the city of Troy and the leaders of the mosque to come to an agreement after the city's zoning laws were found to be in violation of federal law. The mosque leaders sued for damages, resulting in a settlement of an undisclosed amount. The community is so excited. They're really, really happy to have this place where they can come together and pray. They can have their religious ceremonies. They finally have a place for weddings and funerals in the city. Mayor Ethan Baker releasing a statement saying in part, quote, the Troy City Council embraces the multicultural fabric of our city. We are grateful that we were able to amicably resolve the pending case and look forward to continuing a positive relationship. Faith leaders say they're happy to be home. We have been suffering for uh, the homeless people for a long time. Now we got a home where we can pray and communicate with our Creator. Again, neither side would put a dollar amount on the settlement reached, but the city of Troy did waive their right to appeal as part of the agreement. Reporting live in Troy, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Hey, Jacqueline, thank you. History is being made in the state's highest court as Governor Whitmer is appointing the first black woman to the Michigan Supreme Court. Kyra Harris Bolden is going to fill the seat that's been le being left empty as uh, Chief Justice Bridget McCormick has resigned. Bolden is a state lawmaker from Southfield, has been a licensed attorney for eight years. Bolden ran for the high court, you may recall. You saw her name on the ballot in the November election. She lost, but she will join the court nonetheless in January when uh, her house term expires. Bolden wants to keep the seat through 2028. She'd have to run again in 2024. The Final Four is coming back to Detroit. The NCAA announced Ford Field will host the event in the year 2027. Michigan State will be the official host. The two Final Four games will be held on April 3rd and the national championship on April 5th. Ford Field last hosted the Final Four in 2009 when Michigan State ultimately lost to North Carolina in the championship. This season's Final Four is in Houston, followed by Phoenix, San Antonio, Indianapolis, and then Detroit. Ahead of Thanksgiving, COVID cases are dropping in Michigan, but deaths from the virus are going up. State reporting 8,933 new cases in the last seven days, an average of 1,276 cases per day. But we lost more lives in the past week. The state reporting 275 deaths over that same period. Okay, let's uh, get you caught up on your forecast as we head into the holiday week and look at oh, just a beautiful evening. Really getting downtown pretty Detroit. and improving over the really, really cold weather we saw over the weekend, Kim. <laughs> We, the timing was really good because last week we had snow almost every day and then a blustery cold weekend. Now just in time for holiday travel, things have quieted down and gone back more toward normal. 47 at City Airport, but down to 42 at Metro. Now the sun set just after 5 o'clock and the temperature at Metro plummeted 7 degrees just within the last hour. We're on our way to lows in the 20s tonight, but we'll warm back up tomorrow. We're getting a southwesterly flow and you can see the warm air down to our south. St. Louis, mid-50s, Kansas City, 53. Three degrees. If you are traveling tomorrow, not much going on across the country. I have no really major systems, but Dallas has seen some delays. They're getting showers and thunderstorms there. 
and then some snow for the northern plains. Otherwise, for Thanksgiving, that's when we'll see more of the showers and thunderstorms develop from St. Louis down to the Gulf Coast, and that will continue to Friday. Now, Friday here in Metro Detroit, we could get our own batch of a few showers. Otherwise, it looks nice for traveling across much of the country. For us tomorrow, if you're traveling anywhere in the state, it'll be beautiful. Lots of sunshine with a high at 50 degrees. If you are traveling, whether it's here or anywhere in the country, the best way to keep track of all the weather in between newscasts is to download the Forewarn Weather app. You can plug in your city, you can see the radar. It's free and you just go to your favorite app store and type in WDIV and download again the free Forewarn Weather app.